be late for mass. You looked so much like an angel. I thought it a sin to wake you. Last night was but one golden moment to be kept hidden in your heart and visited whenever life is cruel. Thank you for the wealthy. And may they continue to send their daughters to convents. Charming. Your girls are an example to us all, Mother Cecilia. And your winery is doing splendidly. I know that the Cardinal will be as pleased with this year's revenues as I was with the wine. Thank you, Your Grace. And God's blessing on you, Baron Mullins, for protecting the bishop on his long journey. He wouldn't be safer in God's own hands. <laughs> Drive on. Go on! Godspeed, Your Grace. Most merciful Father, you're too kind. Is that what you were attempting to hit, little brother? Of course not. The uh, pit of the arm is where armor's most vulnerable. You're supposed to be preparing for your meeting with the bishop. I thought it better to prepare for the initiation tournament instead. Little preparation is required of spectators, Cedric. Now, come on. Oh, I'm going to win, Father. Just like my brothers before me. That should convince you I have the skills to be a knight. Why does everyone think being a knight is so damn splendid? Most die in their first battle. Now, this is not a topic for discussion, Cedric. You're going with the bishop to his monastery in Scotland. No. It's the best course for your future. The clergy can be a wonderful life of spirituality and peace. Good, then you can go in my place. Well, I would gladly, but for that celibacy problem. You're not helping, you know. Father, please, let me enter this tournament. And if I don't win, I'll go with the bishop without complaint. Only unconsciousness silences this family's complaints. Cedric, Cedric, spare yourself the pain of defeat. You'll be going against the best new prospects in the county. Well, their skills may be better, Father. But I'll be fighting for a greater prize, freedom. You'll see, Father. My commitment to victory is as true as my aim. Get him! Leave me! Get him! Just... 
Coachman, what's going on? Why are we stopping? Sorry for the delay. Explain yourself. If you'd be so kind as to hand over your purse. And the bishops as well. I mean no disrespect, Your Grace. But there are many poor people in England who could put that money to much better use than the Vatican. The only thing you'll be handed is your head on the end of my sword. <laughs> Do you not see my arrow pointed at your heart, man? In the name of the church, put that weapon down. This money is for holy work. In the name of the church, the devil has picked many pockets. Ah! I had hoped to avoid exercise today. Yes. And I do believe that's Mullins about to receive the sharp end of a highwayman's sword. Then we've come just in time. <laughs> yes, we did. Maybe we should... Intervene? Well, it would be the noble thing to do. Very well. But let's not push the horses. See you in hell. My next target will be a far larger one. I always surrender to beauty. You surrendered. Now I suggest you do the same or I take back the life I just saved. I was about to overpower him when you appeared. Hmm. It's true. He had my sword expertly blocked with his throat. Do you know who we've captured? Daniel O'Shea, the most wanted outlaw in all of England. Folk tales. Malicious folk tales. What impudence. <laughs> to rob a dignitary of the church. We'll escort you the rest of the way to our castle, Bishop. After we've taken the prisoner to mine. He's our prisoner. We take him to our dungeon. He was robbing me. We apprehended him. He's ours. The outlaw belongs in my custody. The king's law is quite clear. There's one thing that I must insist on. You'll see that he gets a fair trial, of course. I guarantee it. <laughs> John Mullins, lies glide across your face as easily as dead leaves across a frozen pond, and have the man hanged before tomorrow's breakfast. I demand that you release him to me. He'll be fine here. That hoodlum is mine! I'll be back with the sheriff, and a royal order that says so. He may be angry. <laughs> Richard Armas, taken to our dungeon, will deliver him to the king after the tournament. Bishop, this is Cedric. more like a knight than a cleric. He's young, Your Grace. He has a romanticized view of combat. Well, there can be no greater battle than the war over men's souls. We are the holy knights of the Lord. These robes are our armor. The church is our castle. Right. What did you say? Uh, he said good night, didn't you, Cedric? Yes, yes, yes. I've been, I've been going to bed so... Early lately, all this studying, Your Grace, makes me uh, quite weary. That outlaw has stolen more than purses, I can tell you that. <laughs> and what he stole, a girl can't buy back for herself. Disgusting. Ah, uh, disgraceful. Where do you think you're going? To feed the poor misguided creature. You? Serving a man who disgusts you so? 
won't be the first time. But you, you're too much a lady to serve a man so disgraceful. Could do a lady good to be disgraced by a man like that. I'm taking the train. Oh, for my lifeless body! Give it to me! No, What's going on in here? Just preparing a tray of food for the prisoner, my lady. And you were giving him this knife so he can cut both of your throats. We weren't thinking right, my lady. No, you weren't thinking at all. You were too busy clucking like a couple of hens. Here, I'll take the tray. I'll find the two of you locked in his cell and him halfway back to Ireland. My name is Eleanor. It's a strange castle where the noble play servant to the lowly. The servants found you too dangerous. I'm not half as dangerous as the tongues that wag those lies about me. Lies? With my own eyes I saw you rob the bishop and John Mullins. An illusion. I was hungry and I merely stopped his coach to ask him for some charity. The man's generosity was expressed with a swipe of his sword. You're a liar. A liar, is it? And who do you believe, me or John Mullins? My God, the man's reputation is worse than mine. Step to the back of the cell. Don't be such a coward. I can't hurt you. You won't get any supper unless you step back. Bring it over here. A man wouldn't be afraid to get closer. I'm not afraid. Locked behind bars, still you fear me. You'd best call one of your brothers. Or you faint. I can't seem to reach it. Let go of me! Concentrate. If you concentrate any harder, your brain would steam. Cedric's asked me to train him for the tournament. You said no, of course. I said yes. I said you'd help as well. Father will kill us. Not the way we're going to train him. Mother's last wish was to have Cedric join the church. We're going to see that her wish comes true. Checkmate. No. Yes. I was gone, were you? Don't go. Come and have a good look at your caged animal. Or were you coming to have a look at yourself? Myself? We're both the same, under the skin. I'm no outlaw. No? You, walking around in pants, shooting a crossbow as well as any man. A noble father couldn't approve of that. He lets me do what I want. Because he knows you'll do it anyway. Doesn't mean he approves of it. Uh, you're an outlaw, all right against noble behavior and the rules that restrict women like a girdle. And you don't agree with those rules? Repression. That's all it is. The same kind of noble repression I've been fighting against since birth. Mm. Well, it's not the same thing. Repression is repression, no matter which way you look at it. And we're just fighting different battles against the same enemy now, aren't we? There are so few who have so much. So many that have so little. 
That's why I steal. To try and balance the car a little. Well, if I hadn't been noble born, I probably would have done the same thing. With your temper, you'd have killed every noble that crossed your path. You'd have been hung before your tenth birthday. They never would have taken me alive. Hmm. That I truly believe. God help the man who paws for you. He's in for one hell of an adventure. I have to go. The sun is up. If my father finds my bed not slept in, he'll know I was down here all night. He's right to keep you away from a man like me. And why is that? The precious jewel is only loaned out to someone you know will return it. Well, I don't want to be a jewel. Hmm. But you are. Never to be owned. Or put in a box. Or displayed for the vanity of others. man's ploy. It teaches you to fight without sight. Well, for night fighting. That's right. Now sometimes, especially in tournaments, the dirty fighters will try and sling mud and sand in your face. Now when that happens, you'll be glad you learned the blind man's ploy. I'd like to learn that one myself. Right. Are you ready? What do I do? Listen. To what? The wind. The wind? Swing the pumpkin round a bit, Richard. Hear the pumpkin? No. Listen harder. Things make a noise as they go through the air. Hit the pumpkin. What it is you're doing with Ellen, Elizabeth, but she seems almost grown up these days. I'm trying to gently introduce her to other things. I didn't put Amos and Richard up to this. You might as well have. It's the best thing for Cedric. I know. And you made a promise to Anne. I know. But don't fool yourself, Thomas. This isn't for Cedric. It isn't for Anne. It's for you. Is that so wrong? You're sending him away against his will. Couldn't bear to lose him, Elizabeth. He's the one most like her, isn't he? Yes. Then I think you'd at least want to see him in better hands. A bishop? But he's... He's conceited and pompous. He wields his power in the church like a sword. I think the only reason he's interested in Cedric is for the influence your name will give him. I don't like him, Thomas. I would never have guessed. I'll tell you something else. I don't think the friar likes him either. The training seems to be coming along. <laughs> Uh, 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 
It's no use, brother. He just doesn't have the skill. Cedric. Are you coming, brother? Where's Cedric? He's not feeling very well. <laughs> Don't you have the decency to wait to be announced? I'm feeling incredibly decent at the moment. I brought the sheriff with a royal warrant for my prisoner. I'm sorry, Sir Thomas, but this comes from the king. He's been after this hoodlum for some time, and he doesn't care much what happens to him. Father, you can't let them take him. You don't know him. It's possible he's nothing like they say. And how would you know? Father, you have to try and stop this. Sheriff? It's the king's law. Excuse me. Voices rising upstairs. Mullins has brought the sheriff. You've got to get me out of here. I'll be hung for sure. My father will never forgive me. Is it forgiveness you'll be worrying about when they come to stretch my neck? I don't know. Fine, fine. You do the noble thing. <laughs> I was mad to think a lady would give a damn about a common thief like me. I do care. Then in the name of God, get the key and let me out. God love you. Half as much as I do. the apple rope to me in the first place. Covington Cross will be back in a moment. I couldn't have escaped without help. Are you insinuating that I had a hand in this? Despite me, you're capable of anything. Take that back! Take that! for you to teach your children some manners, Sir Thomas. You're quite right, Richard. Next time you shove John Mallins over a table, say excuse me. Yes, Father. I see how light your tongue is when the King hears about this. Armas and Richard, find the outlaw and bring him back here. Come on, let's get Cedric and show him a few things on the hunt. It doesn't look good, Sir Thomas. It would have been impossible for him to escape without somebody helping. If someone did help him, they'll be severely punished. I couldn't just let him be taken and hanged. He's a criminal. Maybe in your eyes, in the eyes of all nobles, but not in the eyes of the poor. 
Do you know he gives away everything he steals, or doesn't that matter to you? He told you that? Yes. And you believed him? Why shouldn't I? Because, because he's a criminal. Let me know to lie from time to time. He steals from the rich and keeps it for himself. You're wrong. How do you know? Where's the poor person you consulted on the matter? He wouldn't lie to me. I didn't realize you were so naive. I'm not. You had to stay in your room. Like a child. By doing a childish thing. And what if I refuse to stay? You seem fond of the dungeon lately. Perhaps you'll be more comfortable there. When you're a knight, danger hides behind every bush. A keen eye for trouble gives you the better of it. What trouble? We've already wasted an entire night and most of the morning looking for this outlaw. Besides, I've got to get to my jousting lessons. There's no trick to jousting. You just ride fast and thrust hard. If you do well in the tournament, I assume you'll be leaving for the Crusades straight away. I hadn't really thought about that. You've campaigned so hard, I think Father would insist on it. Besides, you'll have at least six months travel just to find the front. Six months? Ah, oh, but it's worth it once you get there. You'll see. Exciting, is it? I'll say. Nothing gets the heart pounding like living in the constant fear of having your head sliced off. And just wait until you taste the food. It's good, isn't it? Excellent. When we had some. Of course, we had some lean days. <laughs> I got to picking grubs and such right up off the ground. Some of those little beasts could be pretty tasty, cooked in oil and swamp grass. Tell them about the women. Yes, yes, tell me about the women. <laughs> they do like a soldier, don't they? Of course, they were usually out-of-the-way girls, you know, the kind that don't take much stock in their appearance. Missing teeth, bald, some of them. Most had an incredible aversion to bathing. No teeth? Some were dandy whistlers. <laughs> Let me tell you, after months of slogging through rain and mud, you'll be glad for comfort, whatever shape it comes in. I envy you, Cedric. But just remember what I told you. Look for trouble, and it won't find you first. The knight that stays alive is the one with eyes in the back of his head. Your nightgown, my lady. You have ruined heaven for me. For I thought only an angel could look like that. What are you doing here? I don't know. But I'm so very glad I am. Everybody's looking for you. And isn't this the very last place they'll look? My father's right downstairs. He'd kill you if he saw you here. Makes it all the more exciting. Have you any plans for the evening? The moon is right for riding. I'm confined to my room like a child. Then I'll release you as you did me. Vines can be a handy way of avoiding fathers. It'll be in total defiance of his orders. He'd be infuriated to the point of raving. I'll just need a moment to change.
Time to go to work. Coach is coming. Coach? Coaches are for Robin, my love. You can't rob a coach. Of course you can. You have all the necessary skills, and I can promise you it's most entertaining. I'm not a thief. You're the lover of a thief. That proves you have poor judgment. Why not step completely off the cliff? Sit there and watch if you like. But life was not meant to be observed. It was meant to be stolen. Slow down! What's your hurry? Don't you know it's a fine day for a robbery? Wouldn't pay to play the hero. No problem with me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. A robbery. Well, don't harm me. My God, please. Well, here's my purse. Now, off you go. Well, off, I say. It's a little on the light side. Oh, uh, yes. Well, I, I, I don't travel with much. Um, there are outlaws, you know. Oh, yes, of course you know. What about the compartment under your seat? Why, you disgusting little sneak. You're talking about the woman I love. Now, I would appreciate not getting blood on my sword today. Please. The other purse. Ooh. Take it. Take it. I'm forever in your debt, my lady. I thought Cedric would still want to become a knight and go off to the Crusades. I know. No, who would have thought he'd fall for those ridiculous training exercises? Well, he's game, I'll say that for him. But I think my recollection of the Crusades <laughs> took the desire out of him. Still, life as a cleric should look much better now. I was particularly fond of your recipe for grubs. <laughs> Let's put the money we stole to good use. And not a moment too soon. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, sir. Seems you reap a weary harvest. This should keep you fed for a while. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Give him all of it. He's more than happy with what I gave him, aren't you? Most pleased. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> they need clothes, better shelter. I thought these were the kind of people we stole the money for. But you just saw me give the money. Not enough. I have my own life to think about. You told me you didn't steal for yourself. I said I give to the poor, which I do. But I have to live. I admit I have a fondness for the beautiful and expensive. You lied to me. I've been such a fool. No, a woman. A woman I love very much. was right. You're a lying, thieving criminal. That I am. But you can't help loving me in spite of my faults. I hope the next time I see you, there's a rope around your neck. said you haven't responded to any offers of food. I thought you might not be well. I feel fine, Father. Good. Good. I... 
I just wanted to be alone. I don't agree with what you did, of course, but you did what you thought was right. I have to respect that. I was wrong and, and stupid. You were right about everything. I was. I should yield more to your experience. <laughs> An eye to your heart, for it is that which makes me love you so. <laughs> your brothers had no luck finding the outlaw. He slipped through Mullin's net as well. The net must be very fine that can catch a snake. You're free to leave your room. I'm happy I won't miss Cedric's debut. Well, let's just hope he doesn't hurt himself. Oh, by the way, I'm uh, having the gardener remove that uh, unsightly vine under your window. It's, uh, it's bad for the stonework. Yes, I, I think that that would be a, a very good idea. is doing quite well. Yes, Your Highness, he's doing much better than I expected. Cedric is certainly putting his heart into this. Then his heart is misplaced. He will find it again in the church. Not if he wins. <laughs> I see you believe in miracles. Oh, don't you? Riders, take your position! Alone. I came to you too for help. I didn't want you to make the same mistake I did. Get out of my way. My land. When I went off to war, I was young like you. Well, I grew old, and the moment my sword plunged through the belly of the first man I ever killed. That's why I became a cook, Cedric. That's why I turned my back on your appeal. I wanted to win this, not to go to war, but to prove I was worthy of going. To a father, Perhaps to myself. But you never showed me the respect of asking. Your lance dips down before contact. That's why he's gaining the advantage on you. It's too heavy to hold up from the start. Keep it low. You won't get tired, but you'll think you are. And at the last moment, raise the lance and thrust. I can't see. I can't. 
don't see. He's finished. Uh, we'll have to forfeit. No, it means too much. Uh, uh, I'll fight for him. You? Uh. We're about the same size, and with the armor, no one will know. Eleanor. <sighs> the tournament has come to a draw between Cedric Gray of Covington and William Auckland of Kent. There will be a final contest of broadswords to determine who will win the tournament. I should go and see Cedric. He's trying to prove something to you, Thomas. He needs to prove it on his own. for the purse and for the thrill of competing amongst my enemies this is one purse you won't be taking home and who's gonna stop me <laughs> you're good i'm better <laughs> Be the proper time to apologize. No! Sympathy won't help you in this fight. No, my skill will. Cedric? That's Eleanor! Oh. It's him! After him, go! I love you, Eleanor of the Crossbow. That I never lied about. Get him away! Stop him! My God, Father, it's the outlaw! <laughs> <laughs> Not until you admit you love me. Get out before I shoot! You love me, you know you do.
I do love you, but I can't see you again. Not unless you can walk through my front door. I'm a wanted man. I know that too well. Now go, before I lose this courage that hangs by a thread. If this is your wish, then I respect it. back, Eleanor Gray. This I swear. I'm ready, Your Grace. Cedric, don't go. I was disqualified from the tournament, and I made a promise that if I didn't win, I'd go with the bishop without complaint. In time, I'm sure you'll find that this is the right decision. Oh, very true, Your Grace. The life of a cleric is a fulfilling one. Unfortunately, I have some bad news. Your Grace, I'm most humbly embarrassed, but I'm afraid after this incident, Mullen's desire for revenge against this family will be stronger than ever. And I fear I will need all the good fighters I can get to defend this castle. I'm sorry, Cedric, I can't let you go. I understand, Father. So do I. I hope you don't regret this, Sir Thomas. Well, Cedric, I dare say the church will survive without you. As will this castle without you. Did you say something, Fra? I said it was wonderful having you. Covington Cross will be back in a moment.